my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Thursday, June 30th. Had an eventful day yesterday. We had two walk-in visitors uh, yesterday. Uh, both of them had uh, little minor repairs that I did while they waited. Well, both of them were mandolins. Uh, one was Dutch Miller from Oklahoma. He was here first. We did a little setup work and a little... Uh, adjustment on his intonation it was off by a quarter inch or so and we got that all fixed up and the other guy was Jerry Pritchett from Lebanon Missouri and basically almost the same thing yeah his intonation was even weirder he was playing his mandolin left-handed and it's an A style teardrop style and uh, we had to cant his bridge the most I believe I've ever seen a mandolin bridge canted in order to get it to intonate properly. I don't know. It was just a very unique situation. And uh, it, it was, uh, the mandolin was the lower in an A style. And like I said, he was playing it upside down. So he's playing it left-handed basically. He got it turned around. He's got it strung left-handed and all that you know, with a left-handed nut the whole bit. But uh, for some reason, it just had to be slanted crazy much. He said he had had several people try to intonate it, and they couldn't get it done. And and uh, I can see why. You know, I was able to do it, and and I showed him. You know, right there as I was doing it, and he could see the proof right on the tuner. And definitely, we both agreed that that's the way it needed to be set up to make it work. Very strange. Very strange. I should have got that on video, but I didn't. Now Dutch, I did get a little clip of Dutch uh, on video, and uh, he also left his uh, one mandolin here. In other words, Dutch brought me two mandolins, actually, and one of them he left here for me to repair the neck. You'll see it in an upcoming video, but here's a little clip of Dutch Miller. Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop with Dutch Miller from Oklahoma. He's attending the uh, Conway Bluegrass Festival over there. What do they call it? Uh, Starby Creek? Starby Creek. Starby, Starby Creek. Creek Bluegrass Festival. He thought he'd make a little detour, come through the shop, and he brought an instrument for me to take a peek at. And it's a unique uh, instrument. It's a handmade mandolin. Let me sh show you the peg head there first. Jerry Ford out of Stillwater. Je Jerry Ford, he says. Stillwater, Oklahoma. And you can see Dutch's name has been inlaid down through here. And it's a uniquely made instrument. The top on it is, I think he said, was made out of cedar. It's not a quarter sawn type top, which is kind of unusual. And uh, the back looks like it might be some kind of mahogany. I'm not even sure what the back is. Well, you know? They said litmus or something. Yeah, some it's kind of hard what he said. It, yeah, it's a little different. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I, I've seen it, but I can't call it by name right now. Anyway, uh, the problem with this one is the neck has cracked on it uh, a time or two here. And I guess he, you took it back to the fellow there, uh -huh. the, uh, yeah. Mr. Ford, and, and he put some splines in it, but it's cracked again. That's the sad tale. I, I don't think I could do it much cheaper uh, than, I mean, if, I do bill by the hour. So, I mean, yeah. if, it on, if it only took me three hours, you'd yeah. only be charged 300. But if it took me six hours, I'd have to charge you 600. <laughs> yeah. So, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, understand. I have to be fair about that. But, I uh, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, put we'll, our, we'll put our minds to it here. We'll, we? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk this over. You'll see the mandolin repair on that neck uh, down the road. I am not looking forward to that repair. It's going to be difficult. That's a uniquely made mandolin also by someone by the name of Ford. It does look like it's made according to, uh, you know, kind of standard uh, mandolin tradition, if you will. I'm not expecting anything unusual when I do it, but just the fact that you got to cut it apart and put it back together to make it work because that whole neck area there is just busted out. In my vlog from Wednesday morning, I mentioned I was going to fix this cheap $12 microphone stand. Well, I have to tell you, I've had very good success. Very happy with what I did. I took all this mechanism apart down here, found a new square nut and sanded it down to fit the slot that it needed to go in, found this new knob, so it's got new fresh threads and a new stronger nut probably than came from the factory. And so it tightens up real nice now and everything's good and solid. So that was modification number one to the stand. 
Modification number two is that these little plastic uh, sleeves here would come off of this tube and then it would just make a mess here where it wouldn't get tight and things like that. So I took the little plastic sleeves off and filled them with uh, canopy glue put them back on and uh, I believe that canopy glue is it's excellent for sticking plastic to things and I don't think it's going to be a problem at all and so now this tightens down real well and this works really well up here in addition I cut this bar off this used to be another foot longer at least and where we're playing it just got in the way we only need this to extend you know like maybe six or twelve inches like that is is most that's all we really need it to extend and because we're all sitting down in the restaurant and so i just cut it off and put the plastic uh, bumper back on it and so that's modification number three Everything else works just fine on it. So my 12 year old $12 stand is probably better than it came from the factory. And I would imagine it'll last another 12 years. There's where you can gain by being frugal. Tomorrow morning, uh, we'll have our shop talk, 8 o'clock a.m. I may have a visitor, uh, assuming he can get here by 8 o'clock <laughs> from St. Louis, or at least during the show. And uh, we may try to do a little bit of his mandolin repair live on the, on the shop talk in the morning. And his name is uh, Dr. Jim Spadaro, and he's a mandolin player. And uh, I mean, I would call him a relatively new mandolin player. He's been playing for six or eight years. I'm not really sure. Maybe longer than that now. Uh, time gets away from me. Jim has come a long way really fast and does a pretty good job playing that mandolin. So we'll, we'll pick a tune or two. He actually picks the tunes the way most people pick them and they sound good. I just fumble through them. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> That's pretty much the way it is. I, my standard line is if you can play a mandolin, you've already got me beat. Because... <laughs> I just, I just beat on them. I just play them loud and hard, and uh, other folks play them with a little bit of finesse. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you'll join me in the morning. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you then.